Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how ionic compounds form giant ionic lattices. You should then be able to explain why ionic compounds have high melting and boiling points. And finally, you should be able to explain why ionic compounds cannot conduct electricity when solids, but can conduct electricity when molten or dissolved in water. In the last two videos, we've been looking at ionic bonding. Remember that ionic bonding takes place when a metal reacts with a non-metal. A good example is the reaction between sodium and chlorine. In this reaction, one electron is transferred from the outer energy level of the sodium atom to the outer energy level of the chlorine atom. At the end, the sodium atom has a one positive charge, and we now call this a sodium ion. And remember that an ion is an atom with an overall charge. The chlorine atom now has a one negative charge, and we call this the chloride ion. Both the sodium ion and the chloride ion now have a full outer energy level. In other words, they have the stable electronic structure of a group zero noble gas. Now in this reaction, we're making the compound sodium chloride, and I'm showing you sodium chloride here. As you can see, sodium chloride is a crystal, and in fact, many ionic compounds form crystals like this. So in this video, we're looking at how the ions are arranged in a crystal, and how this determines the properties of ionic compounds. The first key fact that you need to learn is that ionic compounds form giant structures, and scientists call this a giant ionic lattice. In a giant ionic lattice, every positive ion is surrounded by negative ions, and every negative ion is surrounded by positive ions. I'm showing you here the giant ionic lattice for sodium chloride. In this lattice, we have positive sodium ions surrounded by negative chloride ions. And you need to remember that giant ionic lattices are three-dimensional structures. In a giant ionic lattice, there are very strong forces of attraction between the positive and negative ions. Scientists call these electrostatic forces of attraction. And I'm showing the electrostatic forces of attraction here. These strong electrostatic forces of attraction hold the positive and negative ions in place. The electrostatic forces of attraction between positive and negative ions are also called ionic bonds, and ionic bonds act in all directions. Now we can also represent giant ionic lattices like this. Here we're not showing the electrostatic forces of attraction, but we know that they're there. Now there are two key properties of ionic compounds that you need to learn. Firstly, ionic compounds have very high melting and boiling points. That's because the strong electrostatic forces of attraction require a great deal of heat energy to break. I'm showing you that here. As we heat the ionic solid, the particles vibrate. When the particles vibrate with enough energy, the electrostatic forces of attraction break and the solid melts. Now, because the electrostatic forces of attraction between the ions are very strong, it takes a great deal of heat energy for these to break. For example, the melting point of sodium chloride is around 800 degrees Celsius. The second key property of ionic compounds is that they cannot conduct electricity when they're solids. In a solid, the ions are locked in place by the strong electrostatic forces of attraction. So in a solid, the ions can vibrate, but they cannot move. However, Ionic compounds can conduct electricity when they're melted or dissolved in water. That's because the ions can now move and carry the electrical charge. Now this often comes up in the exams and students sometimes get this wrong. Remember that when ionic compounds conduct electricity, it's the ions that are moving, not electrons. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above.